Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be looking at the Stratford 100% cotton cold press watercolour pad and this is a medium coarse grain. It's £140 and we're going to play with some watercolour and some watercolour pencils. So you can see here I've done a quick sketch on this medium coarse paper and you should be able to see the grain on this is quite linear which is why I've used this so that I can get a really rough texture. I've chosen my colours, Miles Orange, Miles Deep Red, Miles Violet, Miles Brown, Indigo and Amberg Yellow Shade. So I'm going to start with just wetting my paper I'm um, just going to go all over the drawing, not saving anything, just all of it. So I'm going to use a large size 8 and I'm going to start with the Amber Yellow. And again, I'm just doing this randomly, not putting them in any specific order in any specific place just a little bit random and I'm just going to take a little bit of the indigo just darken that a little bit more and you'll see that went straight to a grey which is why I chose the indigo because it's almost an opposite to this Amberg colour. So again, I can get some quite nice transitions between the two colours. I'm just going to put a little bit more here and darken that a little bit. And again, I'm really not worried about the actual subject matter because they're going to have some really deep colours on them which will stand out all on their own so I'm just going to dry off my water brush fluff that up and very gently just drag in a slightly vertical manner so that I keep some of that grain and I'm going to let that dry off okay so once we're dry I'm just going to make a, a base coat for the rusty areas Darken that down with a little bit of indigo. So this is Mars Orange. And again, I'm just going to water through these first. So I start with my palest pale. So you'll note that I'm jumping spaces and not doing them right next to each other. So this is the same combination, just in reverse. And as you notice, I'm not really staying within the lines either. I'm just roughly doing this because this really does just lift off. A little bit more of the indigo. So you can see you get quite nice browns between these two. Very cool browns. And back to the Miles Orange. So again, a little bit of patience. Um, I'm going to fill in this hole here because I've obviously got background there. So I'm going to go back with my Amberg Yellow. And a little bit of the Indigo. I'm 
just dump that and move it around and there we go so i'll let that dry so my first thing to do is to actually put my shadows in so that's what i'm going to start with first just placing all my shadows And again, allowing them to dry. So this is the mix of amber, yellow and indigo. It makes quite a dark neutral colour, which is quite handy for shadows. I'm not too worried about blending these shadows out either. So I'm going to go in with a slightly heavier layer of Mars Orange. And I'm going to drop some other browns into there, like the Mars Brown. So dropping this in while it's wet so that it actually bleeds on its own. So you can see this is quite a heavy layer going on here. I'm just going to mix through with the indigo. So you see that started to swirl. So I should get some nice swirly patterns when it dries, hopefully. So I'm going to treat the rest of these in exactly the same manner, let that dry and then go in for the detail. So you can see how opaque some of these colours are, they work really well with this paint. Okay, so I'm just using this purpley red colour as some of the lighter shadow areas. So I can start crisping some of those edges up. So my next step is to actually lift just some of the highlights before they get too heavy or caked in paint. So with these paints being just that little bit thicker and we have the grain of the paper, when I tap off you can start to see that it's given me quite a nice rough texture so 
So making sure that I tap dry every time I apply the wet brush so that this remains dry. So when I come back to putting more colour on, it won't run. So you'll notice in these rusty objects, highlights aren't really strong. They're quite light. I can scumble a little bit with the paintbrush as well while it's damp and again it will give you random lift outs. Okay, so you can see that I'm testing mixes as I'm going. So I've made a, an uber dark with the Mars Brown and the Indigo. So I'm really going to go in for a dark space here. So now that I've got a good, really good base for my rusty the objects, I'm going to change to the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils by Faber Castell. So I'm going to use these on their side so you can see that I've actually sharpened these to quite a point. Now this will bring back out the grain of the paper which is really quite helpful. these rusty objects. Let's grey in here. You see these pencils really do cover over even the darkest darks. So you can really apply a lot a lot of texture here. So I'm going to repeat the same technique into the background to get a, a wood effect. So I'm going to continue using my watercolour pencils and using the texture of the paper to get my grain wherever I want it. 